Hey folks, this is Jason, Certified Financial Planner and host of Fighting Words Financial. I'm gonna take a quick break from covering all things Tesla since that's become a lot of my channel lately and I do wanna talk about other things. In this video today, we're gonna to start a conversation about Invite. And when I say start a conversation, I'm hoping to learn just as much from you guys in the comments as you might learn from me in this video. If you don't know who Invite is, they're a company that specializes in genetic testing and specifically a genetic testing for disease diagnostics. Now, I have more than a passing interest in genetic testing. I took a genetic test two years ago, one that's available to the consumers, and uh, it set off an odyssey of discovering new family members, solving uh, ancient uh, family mysteries, and kind of lifted the shroud surrounding my own birth, you know, since I was adopted. Now, I should disclose that I don't have a position in this company, Invite, uh, except through an ETF, and I'm unlikely to purchase this stock in the future. Not because I don't like the stock, uh, it's really because I don't know enough about genomics and I don't know enough about biotech in general to make an informed decision that gives me the confidence to have a concentrated bet on a company like Invite. My interest in this company, Invite in particular, is due to the fact that it comprises so much of ARK Innovations uh, ETFs, uh, you know, the funds that are run by Kathy Wood. In fact, the ARK Innovation ETF, ARK K, it actually comprises 8% of all of the holdings. Now, I think that most of my subscribers are probably familiar with ARK Invest and know that I'm a big fan of Kathy Wood, but I have to be honest, I don't get why this company in particular is such an outsized portion of her portfolios. What I'm really looking for in the comments is your help to understand why ARK Invest thinks that this company, Invite, is so important, especially when there's so much competition in next generation genomics. So what does Invite do? They offer genetic testing for a variety of clinical areas, including hereditary cancer, cardiology, neurology, pediatric genetics, metabolic disorders, immunology, hematology, and other types of cancer studies. Invite's focus for adults appears to be on proactive testing. It's an option for healthy folks who want to understand their genetic risks and focus on prevention. Test results are supposed to have a medical basis and be clinically actionable. For pediatric testing, the focus appears to be on developmental disorders and congenital anomalies. Invite's mission is to bring high quality genetic testing into mainstream medical practice. Now it's been more than a decade since privately held companies like 23andMe and Ancestry.com, which is where I did my genetic testing, uh, it's been about a decade since they started to popularize genotyping, which is a method of looking at genetic differences in a person's DNA. Now, a scientist can use these tests to determine things like gene genealogical makeup, hair color, and whether a person has a genetic risk for some diseases. 23andMe has tests for a number of disease variants, and I occasionally get updates by email letting me know that more genetic reports are available. But this type of test is really far from exhaustive or even complete, and Ancestry is just starting to offer you know, certain types of health screening, and 23andMe has been offering these limited health screenings for quite some time. There is an entirely new crop of genetic testing companies that are expanding the market with next generation sequencing. Invite, for example, offers a suite of tests that can be ordered online by the consumer using telemedicine. Other companies like Natera require a physician to order the test. Now, most of these companies also employ genetic counselors who can help patients interpret their risks and results. Next generation sequencing examines the human genome and the human exome. The genome is the complete set of DNA that you know makes up who a person and what a person is. The exome comprises about 2% of that, well, an estimated 20 to 25,000 genes. Now these genes code for protein synthesis. Many, many diseases stem from proteins that have been coded improperly. Sequencing a whole genome, unlike your 23andMe and your ancestry test, isn't cheap, and when 23andMe launched its genetic test in 2006, the cost to sequence a whole genome was close to about $10 million. Thanks to advances in software, hardware, and mostly artificial intelligence, that price has dropped under the $1,000 mark. Credit belongs mostly to Illumina for this cost reduction. Illumina makes next generation sequencing machines and tools and, uh, and diagnostic tools. Now, finding long lost relatives and entertainment value aside, the inexpensive Ancestry and 23andMe genetic tests look at less than 1% of the human genome. That minuscule snapshot is basically useless. In terms of what it can tell us about genetic health or how your genes will influence how you respond to medical treatments. We know that Kathy Wood and ARK Invest are concentrated on disruptive innovation and in particular how cost declines influence 
when the time is right for an innovation to really take off. ARK Invest expects whole genome sequencing to cost under $100 in the near future, in some cases also to be available for consumers to purchase directly. That will relegate today's consumer genetic test basically to the trash bin. Now all of the data that Ancestry.com has collected and uh, 23andMe has collected is still going to be available and out there and that can likely be shared across companies. This does cause some privacy concerns, and I think there are a lot of people who are concerned about privacy issues surrounding gene sequencing. There are more than a thousand genes that indicate a heightened hereditary risk of breast or ovarian cancer, and most consumer genetic tests don't look for very many of these variants, maybe 50 at most. The ARK Invest prediction is that in five years, you're gonna have new technologies, sequencing technologies, that are going to be just as affordable as the near useless consumer tests today, but they're gonna offer tens of thousands of times more information that's going to be clinically actionable. The scientific community is still in the very early stage of understanding the human genome, and new discoveries are being made in genetic science all the time. Invite's mission to bring high quality genetic testing into the mainstream medical practice, for example, could lead to an era of precision medicine in which treatments for cancerous tumors are tailored for the genetic mutations of that particular tumor. And to some degree, this is already happening. This new age of tailored medicine has already begun. Some estimates are that 75% of oncologists have already used some of this next generation sequencing to help diagnose cancer or to select an appropriate therapy. The move into precision medicine, you know, these highly tailored drugs for subsets of patients, is already well underway. Now, like I said, we are still in the early stages of this new era of genome tailored medicines, and that is reflected in the financials of Invite. This is not a company that is yet making money. In fact, they lose money every year. Additionally, this company has a history of earnings misses. Now, this is a concern for sure, but the early stage of all disruptive innovations is often like this, and companies lose money for years before they explode into profitability. But here's my real concern and what I don't understand about ARK Invest's choices. Why this company? Why is ARK Invest so convinced that of all of the next generation genomic testing companies, Invite is a clear favorite? So much so that it comprises 8% of the holdings in their flagship ARC Innovation Fund and 11.4% of the ARC Genomic Revolution Fund. What competitive advantages does Invite have over other next generation genetic testing companies like Natera, Fulgent Genetics, and Garden Health? As of today, the ARC Genomic Revolution ETF does not hold stock in any of these companies that I just mentioned. I'm not hearing of any great technological leaps that Invite has made over their competitors. So why does ARK Invest think that this one company is going to emerge as a clear favorite and none of these other companies are going to emerge as clear winners in this genomic revolution? I look forward to hearing your views in the comments. I'd love to know about some technological advantages that either I missed in my research or maybe technological advantages that I just simply didn't understand. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Once again, this is Jason, Fighting Words Financial, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.